in the last two chapters we centered our discussion around cursor objects now in this chapter we will mainly emphasize on results and object while writing anonymous blocks or stored procedures using snowflake sql scripting the focus of this video will not be limited to just sql syntax but we will also explore different looping mechanism to iterate through the result set object as well as we'll explore its limitation with respect to binding parameter so stay tuned until the end of this video we have already covered many important concept in this playlist if you haven't seen those chapters yet please watch it after completing this video the links for all the videos are available in the description section below alternatively you can also visit my medium blog page to find the sample sql script this video will concentrate on result set object concept in the context of snowflake stored procedures or anonymous block and cover all the topic listed here so let's jump to our snow site web ui and see all of them in action welcome to my channel data engineering simplified for all my demonstration i will be utilizing the free trial edition of snowflake on aws make sure to adjust the video quality to 4k since all my recordings are in that resolution to speed up your learning process consider increasing the playback speed to 1.25x or 1.5x for direct communication feel free to message me on my instagram account or join my exclusive facebook group if you are interested in systematically enhancing your snowflake skill check out my premium udemy courses this is my first worksheet called basic construct before we understand and create anonymous block or stored procedure using result set object let's create an employee table and this table has some standard columns like id first name last name department code manager etc and this employee table is going to be used to demonstrate how the result set object works in snowflake sql scripting so my employee table is created successfully now i am going to insert 10 records to this employee table let's check how does it look like so this is how my employee table looks like now this is my anonymous block starting from line number 40 to line number 54 and if you look into the line number 46 i am using a variable called rs of data type result set having a default value which is taking the result of the select star from employee table which we just have created if you look into the line number 42 and 43 we have two different variable employee count is a number type taking a default value select count from employee and another variable called first employee taking a text data type having a default value which is also fetching the result from select first name last name from employee order by date of joining and limit 1 so if you look into this two statement they are taking one single value and this single value is being stored into this variable here also this concatenated value for the first employee is being assigned to this first employee however on the line number 46 this is not just one field value it is the complete select star from employee table where entire employee data set is being stored in the result set and this result set can be iterated and different business rules can be applied so if i have to return the employee count i can write return employee count if i have to return the text data type which is my first employee i can do that but if i have to return a result set i cannot simply say return result set it has to be wrapped in a table and then it has to be returned so let's execute this anonymous block and see how the result looks like so this select star from employee data is being returned from the anonymous block now let's go back to the query history and see how does it look like so here it says select cast select count from the table and this is being type casted to number 38 by 0 if i look into this it is also type casted to the var char a single value is being returned however here it is select star from employee and all those three statement is part of my anonymous block however if you look into the stored proc query id is ending with 8 ae and the query which is executed as a part of anonymous block is having a different query id okay so this all four are part of one single execution however each of them are having different query id one important thing to notice if you remember from our previous chapter when we declared a cursor declaration does not execute the query 
when we use open keyword to open the cursor that time the query is executed however in the result set object the behavior is different when you declared a result set with a query the query is executed then and there it does not support any open keyword to open the result set now this is my second simple anonymous block example where i have defined rs as a result set object and it is also taking select star from employee and instead of wrapping the rs into a table i am simply returning the rs object let's see what happens it says the return result set need to be wrapped with a table so this is very clear that you cannot return a result set directly it has to be wrapped in a table using a table function and then only it can be returned now if i have to run this anonymous block as a stored procedures and if i have to return the result set then this has to be a table now let me call this stored proc i got the result so when you are returning a result set by wrapping it into a table function so your returns specification should match the return type and if it does not match the stored procedure will complain now let's talk about another scenario where in the declare section we are going to declare the result set however the initialization or definition is created in the begin block if that is the scenario this is how the code should look like here on the line number 87 rs of data type result set is declared and on the line number 89 we are assigning a query to the result set object using this semicolon equal to notation and then finally i am returning the result set by wrapping into a table function now let's execute this this got exactly the same result now it is not necessary that the result set has to be declared within the declare section it can also be declared within the begin and block if you look into this example i am using the let keyword my rs1 of data type result set and default value is select star from the table and i am returning the rs1 let me execute this so i got the result likewise if i don't want to use the default keyword i can also use colon equal to notation let's execute this anonymous block so i got the result based on date of join one important point if you are using isno sql cli or you are using legacy web ui then your entire body has to be enclosed within this double dollar sign if you try to run without dollar notation your store procedure will have a compilation error now let's try to understand how to iterate a result set so this is my second worksheet called 0 to iterate result set so this is my another anonymous block and here i have defined my result set rs the select star from employee data set is being assigned to my result set in the begin block i am writing this for loop where each of the row item is extracted from this result set using in and do keyword and then you can really use the dot notation for example row item dot is manager because this is select star from the employee so all the fields would be available and then if the flag equals to yes it means if that particular employee is a manager then the count will increase and finally it will be returned so let me execute this so i got the result there are total four managers and that's what we have seen even in our previous chapter so you can use the result set object directly with the for loop and you can iterate it through there is another alternative what we have seen in chapter 15 where you define the result set and you primarily assign the result set to a cursor and then through the cursor you iterate the list so the logic is same only line number 30 is one additional line here so this approach does not have any advantage over the previous approach it is only that if you are familiar with the cursor you prefer to do through the cursor however instead of a cursor you can simply use the result set and there is no difference between this approach versus that approach so let me execute this this also fetch the same result so these are the two mechanism through which you can iterate through a result set using a for keyword this is my next worksheet called result set dynamic query in real life there are scenarios where you have to build the query dynamically based on the input parameter from your stored procedures or from a different variable and those parameter helps you to build a dynamic query and that dynamic query has to be executed and the result has to be fetched 
into a result set or a cursor. Now, when we are talking about result set, let's understand how we can build a dynamic query. So if I look into this example, so this is my anonymous block. Again, you can use a stored procedure approach. It takes one extra step to run the stored procedure. Anonymous block can be executed then and there. That's why I'm following anonymous block. So if you look into the line number eight and nine, this is my manager count and manager status where default value is zero and Y. And here I have defined a SQL query, which is select a star from employee where manager status is equals to manager status variable and this will be concatenated with this value looks good now what is my requirement i want this sql statement to be executed and the result of this sql statement to be fetched into my result set we have understood in our previous chapter we can use a colon notation followed by the variable name and in that variable name to replace the variable and then we are expecting the query result has to be stored in my result set and rest of the logic is same where i am checking whether my flag is yes or no if it is yes then the manager count will be increased so it says unexpected equal to now if i give this and try to execute it this also did not work if i say default and keep it like this this also did not work so if you have to create a dynamic query and if you have to execute that query this way it is not going to work out so to run it what i have to do so if i have to really execute this query i have to use this keyword execute immediate so this will execute this particular query result of this query will be assigned to this result set variable now let's try that so if i come to my query history what i see is manager equals to yes and i have to use single code before i make sure that this query runs properly because this is a string variable so to make sure that we use single code it is a little trickier approach here so instead of single code i have replaced a single quote with double dollar because if i have to support a single code here and here okay i have to use a double dollar sign and inside the double dollar sign i can write anything so this is a little trickier approach to allow a single code to be part of my sql statement let's execute this now i got this four and let me go back to the query profile so when i look into this query now it is select a star from employee where is manager equals to single quote y single quote now if you remember our chapter 16 where we have used a cursor with binding parameters a snowflake result set object does not support any binding parameters and that is one of the challenge and that's why sometimes you would prefer to use a cursor over result set because cursor provides this binding parameters and that simplify your concatenation approach the way we have done it here right so i can use the binding parameter with question mark and i don't have to use this single quote approach here and with the binding parameter it solves all the problem so if you have not watched my previous chapter for binding parameter with cursor i would suggest you to go and watch that chapter so we have understood the basic construct of result set how we can iterate the result set directly using a for loop how you can use result set along with a cursor however how you can return a result set by wrapping it with a table hope you got something valuable from this video if you did please hit the like button your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content but also helps other to discover this playlist and if you think it can help someone else in your team feel free to share thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together